This video is meant to help you understand all the potential tools and techniques we will be using in this series. I will be reviewing certain tips to help us understand why something is being done when I do it. The first thing we're going to do is to hit edit and go over into preferences. And then under the add-ons tab here, we're going to search in the box here. We're going to type in loop tools. The loop tools add-on should pop up here. Now we're just going to click on the checkbox here to enable it. And once we've done that, we're just going to click here and then save the preferences and exit. We are going to be using the loop tools add-on a lot in this series. Throughout this series, we're going to be using objects like mesh to create the surface of the car. We'll also be using curves to guide meshes in a certain path. We'll also be using lattices to deform meshes in a certain way. And we'll also be using empties for parenting purposes. The last thing I want to talk about is the guide mesh. So what is a guide mesh? I'm going to demonstrate that here for you guys to understand it better. So I'm going to add in a mesh UV sphere. Let me just rotate that in the Y axis by 90 degrees. Now I'm going to take this mesh UV sphere and go over into the modifier properties. And then I'll add in a subdivision surface. And I'll set that to level two. I'm going to duplicate this UV sphere mesh and I'm going to rename the new one as a guide mesh. Now, typically when we're working with a guide mesh, the subdivision levels in the viewport for the guide mesh needs to be set two times higher than the base mesh. So in this case, we're going to set it to level four because our base mesh will be level two. We do not need to set the same value for the render side here. Now, let me just hide this mesh, which is the guide mesh. What we have here is the sphere. Like I said, set to level two. I'm going to shade this as smooth. Let me just switch the mat cap to something that can exaggerate this for us to see. So right now we have a perfect reflection going on, except the pinching on the side here, which is caused by the vertex we have over here, but that's not our focus. We have a perfect reflection going on and we have a subdivision surface modifier applied to this. So I'm going to go into edit mode. And let's say we want to put a line between this side of the sphere and that side of the sphere. So I'm just going to hit control B and then create a space in here to cut that into two. Now you can instantly notice that the reflection has been broken. It doesn't look as beautiful or as seamless as it used to be. Now the question is, how can we maintain this cut line in here and still have that perfect reflection flowing from the left side to the right side? That's when the guide mesh comes in. So I'm just going to do something real quick here. Let me just fill the face on the inside here and then set some vertices on the inside. So now all we're going to do is to guide the vertices of this mesh here onto the surface of the guide mesh, which has no broken reflections in it. I'm sure this will make sense once I show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a new modifier here called the shrink wrap modifier. Now we're going to set the target to guide mesh and instantly you can see the reflections are fixed. If I should disable and enable, you can tell the reflections are fixed, but now we have some weird artifacts going on here. Now the reason these artifacts are showing here is because the shrink wrap is taking all the vertices we have in this mesh here, including the ones we have in the middle here. Let me just hide the left side here real quick, including the ones we have here and it's shrinking all of them onto the surface of the guide mesh. So basically how a guide mesh and a shrink wrap modifier works is, if I should bring the guide mesh back and then take the sphere and go into edit mode of the sphere, the shrink wrap modifier is going to take the vertices of our selected mesh here and then shrink it onto the guide mesh surface. So if I should take this vertex here and then say I move it up in the Z axis, it's going to calculate the shortest distance that it is from the surface of the guide mesh and then shrink wrap it accordingly onto that surface. So if I should demonstrate something here for you guys real quick, I'm going to take the whole vertices we have in here. I'm going to press G and move it out like so. So this vertex here is going to shrink this vertex from here 
all the way down to the closest surface or the surface that it is closest to. So it's going to be a straight line like this. It's going to shrink it towards that surface like so. And if I should go out of edit mode and then hide the guide mesh, let me just move it up to about somewhere here to exaggerate it some more. Now you notice we have a full sphere. If I should bring it back, we have a full sphere here. All these vertices here are closest to the surface here, and not the ones on the other side. So basically the shortest distance between the vertex and the guide mesh surface is what is going to use to shrink wrap those vertices. I'm going to undo that real quick. Now the next question is how do we get rid of these artifacts here? To get rid of these artifacts, we're going to define what vertices we want shrink wrapping onto the surface. So I'm going to go into our object data properties tab here. I'm going to add in a new vertex group here. I'm going to select all of the vertices that I want shrink wrapping onto the guide mesh. So I'm going to take everything and I'm going to deselect the inner ones here. I'm going to assign all the selection to the group we have here. I want to go back into our modifier tab here. I want to select that vertex group in this section here. And that should fix that problem. You can see our reflection is perfect. If I should disable the shrink wrap modifier, you can see the difference we have here. Now I'm just going to explain to you guys why the reflection broke when we added in the cut line. So let me just get into the front view and then add in a mesh plane. I'm just going to move that over here. I'm going to add in about four loop cuts in here and then take these two, or well, let's take all of them except the middle ones and move it down like so. And I'm going to move these down as well to about here. I'm going to add one more here and move it up to about there. And then let's add in a subdivision surface modifier here. Now let's get into the front view. Let's go into wireframe view here. So you can see what the subdivision surface modifier is doing here. If I should go into edit mode, you can see this is the actual position of the vertices of our plane here. But then the subdivision surface modifier is taking all of them from here all the way to the other side and then averaging it out and then rounding it off as it goes. Now if you take a look here, you can see that the averaging or the roundness is peaking over at the last vertex or edge we have over here. The same thing is happening here. So basically what that means is if we are to add in a cut line between these two here, like so, and then delete the faces like that, it's pretty much going to do the same thing and then average it and then end it at this edge we have over here because it has nothing else on the other side to average it to. So that's how the subdivision surface modifier works, which is why when we added in the cut line here, it broke the reflection. Another modifier we'll be using throughout this series is the mirror modifier. So let me just delete this side of the mesh here. Now let me just add in a new modifier called the mirror modifier here. Now basically what the mirror modifier does is it takes one half of an object and then mirrors it on the opposite side of that object. Now this modifier is affected by the origin point of your object. So if I should go into front view, our origin point is currently here. And I want to mirror on the x-axis. So we can see the x-axis is checked here. But we can't see any mirror on the left side. The reason for that is when we initially added in the sphere, we rotated it in the y-axis. So in order to have this mirror modifier working correctly, we would have to apply the rotation of the mesh. So I'm just going to hit Ctrl A and then apply rotation. And that should fix it and move it to the right position of the object, which is the left side of the mesh. If you mistakenly move your origin point to another position, that is the point that the mirror modifier is going to use to mirror your object. So for example, if I should move my 3D Kezer here and then I set the origin to 3D Kezer, you will notice how the mesh will move. So your origin point plays an important role on how your mirror modifier works. So hopefully this gets you well equipped and ready to start taking the series. I'll see you guys in the next video.